Welcome back to the Elevate Everyday podcast. This is part two of our muscle building series, and this one is the nutrition side behind building muscle. So we all know that you need to get enough protein and enough calories to build muscle, right? You got to fuel and recover correctly. Um, but we help a lot of our clients actually build muscle and lose fat at the same time. So in this video, we're going to be talking about how we do that kind of more how we, we call it recomposition, how we recomp our clients and how they all build muscle and lose fat by working with us. So I want to start with my story of how I first got started. I was like a smaller kid. You know, a lot of you guys already might know this. If you've been following me for a while. I was like 120 pounds my sophomore year of high school. Then I put on like 50 pounds the very next year. Um, and it was definitely like the dirty bulk, dreamer bulk type of thing. Um, where I was just eating as much as I possibly could to put on size and put on muscle, definitely put on muscle, but definitely put on a, a lot of fat too. And it's just, it's unnecessary. It made it so that when I eventually cut down, it made things a lot harder. Probably it wasn't the best for my health at the time either. Um, but all I cared about was getting bigger. Okay. So I would not suggest that for a lot of those reasons I just said. Um, and the studies actually show now, and I'm realizing that the comparison between being in a slight surplus compared to being in this like dreamer bulk, dirty bulk type of thing, like the amount of muscle you put on, if you're eating excess calories is not that much. You're just going to put on a lot of extra fat, right? So, so that's where I wanted to kind of start Herb. What's, what's your input and perspective on that first note? Yeah, I agree with you a hundred percent. Um, it's it, in the old days, they used to say, Hey, you can lose weight. You can lose body fat, you can gain muscle, but you can't do both. What? That doesn't make any sense. So <laughs> it, what it is, is you just got you just got trainers out there to say, hey, do this, do that. And I'll talk to you when you lose weight um, instead of working with the individual. And like you said, calories, man, it's the, and we've already talked about the thyroid, the hormones and everything, how it affects. When I was trying to bulk at my height, I could not, I could get 5,000 calories in, my body couldn't digest it. And I couldn't grow. I was just sluggish. 3,800 calories. I grew like a weed. My body could digest it. And it, so you got to find that place that works for everybody. Um, but yeah, um, in the old days, like I said, before we got on here, in the old days, the the, the steroid Bible, the first page says uh, the only thing wrong with eating a uh, Whopper is not eating two. <laughs> so yeah, when we first got, I mean, Lee Priest, who's one of my favorite uh, bodybuilders from back in the day, um, bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. He'd eat a he'd eat a family bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. He had bulk up to three hundred and thirty pounds in the off season yeah. at five five, shred down to two twenty five on stage and be a beast. And even him at, over time was like, okay, this is this isn't smart. Yeah, <clears throat> this isn't good on my heart. So now, as far as the competitive bodybuilder, if you want to look at it that way, they all use recomping basically. Right. They stay within 30 pounds of their optimum on stage weight. And these guys are 280 to begin with. Yeah. Right. So, again, it's it's lack of education um, on most people's part because they're just like, hey, I'll just eat 500 calories less than I'm burning and I'll lose weight. Theoretically, everything being equal. But guess what, guys? Not everything's equal. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the. I think a lot of people, they just get one off advice from someone like in passing and conversation. You know, I think it's like the lazy trainer just kind of like in, in passing is going to be like, yeah, you just need to eat more. And then those people just take it and run with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it, yeah. it's just the lazy approach. It's, it's not the specific strategic strategy that's going to help you put on good lean muscle and not put on excess body fat. Right. So yeah. um, when it comes to that approach, you know, I, I find that you know, recomp is much more strategic, right? And I think where we come in as coaches um, and where, where we kind of set ourselves apart from a lot of people in the industry is that like we are more about making the right adjustments along the process to make sure that we're putting on lean muscle, um, we're losing body fat because it's not like we, we know the formula coming in right away and it's like, boom, there you go. You're good for the, the next six months, right? It's usually, no, we, we need to see the data month in, even week in, week out, um, and like make the strategic adjustments along the way to the calories and the macros to make sure things are super dialed in throughout the whole process. So, so what are you, what are kind of your thoughts on that? Herb? Yeah. The, the, the day of the cookie cutter workout gone, cookie cutter nutrition gone. I mean, we've got clients that you and I have been talking to, thyroid issues, 
um, that time of the month, menopause. So they're like, I got questions. And it's like, yeah, we're going to go find the answers for you. Because again, I don't care if you're, you know, you're genetically jacked or you're in a wheelchair. Everybody has the, the right to have a better quality of life. And we can do that for you, help you do that through nutrition and working out, period, end of story. And like you said, you have to be able to adjust on the fly. And it's just tweaking stuff. It's not like you got to go reinvent the wheel, yeah. right? You're just like, hey, Herb, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. It's Wednesday. I've been dying at two o'clock, kind of fading off here. All right, let me put a little more calories in your, in your food, but you're going to have to burn a little bit more for me too. Sorry, I would rather give you more food and make you work more than take food away. Right. So again, we got to remember you're working with the human body here and it's going to try to keep you in the best health possible. So when you start just jamming food in your face and I never understood that, Herb, I'm going to gain 20 pounds this month. Here's a 20 pound dumbbell. Walk around with that all day. Tell me how that feels. Your body is not going to accept that. Right. That's why it doesn't work. You put on the weight, you take the weight off. You do it nice and easy. Recomp, maybe lose three or four pounds of body fat a month, put on a pound or two of muscle. That's damn good right? That's going to be long-term gain. So yeah, it's, but we have that mentality. I want it now. I'm going to stomp my feet and hold my breath. Yeah. Yeah. I know. And it's the, this, the old mentality of like these extreme bulks, extreme cuts. It's like, I, I was in it for a while. Like, like I said, I dirty bulked really hard when I first got started and then I just had to cut really hard when I uh -huh. cut. And, and it's almost like when you do it that way, it's, you're just making it so much harder on yourself. Um, and it, it just does take a little bit more strategy to do more of like a lean bulk or a recomp. Um, but in the long run, like it's just, you're, you're almost when you're dirty bulking and you're cutting really aggressively, it's like, you're, you're just on this like up and down roller coaster, as opposed to, you could just be like a steady incline over time instead of yeah. just being way up, way down. It's just more sustainable. So, and, and it's going to do less damage to your body overall. Yeah. You know, uh, again, it's, it's, it's about individual goals, but there is no reason. So, I mean, genetically or scientifically, they always say, Hey, you put on three pounds of muscle, you're going to put on a pound of fat. Okay. Recompy makes a lot of sense to me. I get up 10 pounds. I want to take three off. Yep. Makes sense. Right. I don't want to go up 40 pounds and take 40 off. I've seen it. it, it it's crazy. Cause again, there is no reason to do a dirty bulk, right? Uh, again, if you're going to be a competitive bodybuilder, there's no reason to do a dirty ball. If you're a mom, a uh, dad, nine to five, and trying to you know be in the best shape of your life for your kids and your family and health, there's no reason for it. Put on a couple, take off a couple, and it's part of a lifestyle, guys. Yeah, hundred percent. So that that was kind of the the myth that I wanted to bust is that you have to just eat a ton um, to put on muscle and just like be in a, this crazy surplus. So what what do you want to kind of bust as far as myths when it comes to nutrition behind building muscle herb um i think the biggest myth i people are scared of carbs um yeah. you know I, I talked to the group here a couple about a month ago six weeks ago saying i was going to go on a carnivore diet mixed with the mediterranean and i did and i'm still going to stay mostly on that but i need my carbs i need my carbs i need my glucose and glycogen i need to pump my muscles i need to have that because there's a difference between if you said to me, hey, I want to look good, I don't do shit for a living, I'm just going to walk on stage. Okay, I'm not going to worry about your carbs, let's get you looking great. But when you, like your friend that you just signed up today, he's a football player, performance. You don't have carbs, your ass ain't performing. I don't care who you are, I don't care what kind of ketos you're running around with in your body, no way you're taking the hit from a 280 pound linebacker <laughs> when you're running around on keto not going to happen. You need your carbs to perform. So there's a difference between performance and enhancement, mm -hmm. right? So that's why we get in there. We talk to people and say, Hey, you know, based on what you want to do, we have to do it this way. Yeah. And we can readjust as we go, which we've done numerous times, yeah. but to get started, you have to have a good idea of what you're trying to do, where you want to be so that we can get there. But yeah, um, it, it's very important. People realize that the, the dirty bulking day is gone. <laughs> I mean, I, I really haven't, Kate, to be honest with you, I haven't heard that in my circle in quite a while because everybody knows that's bullshit. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I completely agree on the carb side of things. Yeah, everyone wants to demonize carbs these days. And it's, mm -hmm. say, if you're using them correctly and you're eating the mm -hmm. right type of carbs, they're a tool, right? Just mm -hmm. like we said um, in our macro series. And again, you know, we didn't want to beat a dead horse on this one. So if you want kind of more of a deep dive into all the macros, the protein, carbs, and fat, go back and watch our macro series. Um, 
But yeah, so any other kind of points on on nutrition behind building muscle on your in herb for this one? Um, it, again, I would think uh, consistency is very important. Eating at the same time every day is very important. You teach your body, you do the work. This is what I'm going to feed you. And this is what I'm going to feed you. Your body will perform. Yeah. You take yeah. the food away for a couple hours and body's going to be like, okay, I better store some because I don't know what this guy's doing. Yeah. Right. So I think once you get on a plan, you have to be committed to stay consistent, yeah. you know, and then once you, yeah, once you get there, then you can change it up a little bit, but stay consistent guys. Yeah. I wanted to, another kind of myth that I wanted to bust is I, I hear this thrown around a lot and, you know, and it's got some, some merit, but a lot of people just say like it's 80, 90% nutrition. I know we talked about this a little bit on our last call, um, but you know, it is a lot nutrition, but if you're not doing anything to stimulate your muscles for them to grow, it, it doesn't really matter what you're doing nutrition wise, they're not going to grow, right? Like you have to add that stimulus. So that's, that's a lot of what we'll talk about on the, on the next series or in the next part of this one, part three, and you know, a lot of what we talked about in part one. Uh, but even though this is the nutrition <laughs> portion of the talk, um, I just wanted to kind of bust that too, that it isn't, you know, when it comes to building muscle, a lot of people just say it's all about nutrition. It's like, no, you, you need to stimulate your muscles to grow. So a lot of that has to do with the gym. So. Yep, one hundred percent. You don't, you don't, you don't make the uh, the necessity for the food. The food's not going to be used accordingly. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, so guys, pretty short and sweet with this one. Um, you know, again, we didn't want to be a dead horse. Go go check out the macro series. Go check out part one of this series. Um, and stay tuned for part three, where we'll go even deeper into some of the ways that you can really maximize your time in the gym to build muscle. Um, other than that, we'll catch you in the next episode. Comment below if you think my mustache should get shaved off or if I could just keep letting it cook. And we'll see you in the next one, guys. Elevate every damn day. Peace. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.